to federal purchasing agents. I'm going to teach you how to search and, and find your competitors and the purchasing agents they're selling to and how to actually find the name and phone number and email of the federal purchasing agent so you can call and introduce yourself, hit them with your elevator pitch, and ask them what you can do to earn their business. If you call enough primes and you call enough uh, federal purchasing agents, get in front of enough of these guys, you can line up work that way. And it's a system that I, I like to say I like to attack this system from every angle. Uh, some people don't like the word subcontracting. And I understand that because in the private arena, I've heard all kinds of horror stories about people who've done sub work and were never paid. Uh, with the federal government, it's a little different. When you do a subcontract for a prime, it counts as past performance. It counts as experience. It counts as federal uh, experience, federal past performance. Uh, also, when you do a good job and the prime does a bad job, a lot of the times when that pro contract comes up for renewal, that purchasing agent will ask you to bid on it next year as a prime because you've already proven yourself. And number three, you're, you're practically guaranteed to be paid when you work as a subcontractor on a federal contract because if you do the job, uh, a lot of times the primes have to disclose who their subs are. So the, prime, the federal purchasing agent knows that you're, you're the subcontractor. When you complete the work and you invoice the prime, if they don't want to pay you, you can uh, go to the GAO and register a complaint that this prime is, is not is denying paying you, and the GAO will actually uh, do an investigation. And if the GAO determines that it's not your fault and it's the prime's fault, then you have legal evidence to prove that they need to pay you. So to some extent, the government will actually enforce and make sure that you are paid. Having said that, uh, there's three systems that you can do subcontract work in. The first system I'm going to show you is an area where you're not going to be doing cold calling. I, I call it warm calling because the people that are on this list are on this list because they want you to call them. These are large contractors that do contracts over 650000 and when a prime does a contract over 650000 they have to hire 23% small businesses to do subcontract work for them or they could lose the contract. This database is called Subnet, and I'm going to show you how that works next. I'll email you all these links as well, so you don't have to write them all down. Yeah. Okay, subnet is the subcontracting operator uh, opportunities directory. So you can see right here under the disclaimer, when large businesses receive a contract over 650000 they have to hire 23% small businesses to do subcontract for, work for them, or they could lose the contract or be fined. So it's by state alphabetically. So you pick a state, click on it, wait for it to load, and it lists the companies alphabetically uh, in, in the order of the business name. Now, unfortunately, they don't list the companies by services. So, obviously, not all of these companies can utilize your services. The, the major thing about this is that the people that are on this list, like Mr. Potter here, there's his email, there's his phone number, Mr. Harborn, uh, Wayne Clausen, these guys are the ones that work with small businesses. A lot of these are called small business liaison officers. You'll see it right there, SBLO. And those are the people at the large companies that are responsible for hiring 23% small businesses. There's a buzzword that you use when you talk to these people. So in addition to calling them and introducing yourself and hitting them with your elevator pitch, you're going to mention to them that you can help them with their ESRS requirements. It's on your list of acronyms that I sent you on the first training, and it stands for Electronic Subcontract Reporting System. The ESRS is where they post how much they've paid you to prove that they're meeting 23% of their federal budget with small businesses. 
When you tell them you can help them with their ESRS requirements, they know what that means. Now, one out of a hundred, on a rare occasion, you're going to tell someone you can help them with their ESRS requirements, and they're going to say, um, no, because we're a construction company, and we don't do blah, 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 whatever you do. So there's no way you could work for us as a sub. More than likely, that, that purchasing uh, person, that SBLO at that company doesn't realize that they can hire you to work for them directly, and they can still write it off on their ESRs. For example, uh, I've got a client of mine who's a big construction guy. He does a lot of construction jobs for the federal government. He's always trying to meet that ESRs requirement. Uh, he called me uh, last year and was, was getting set up for a GSA. He was ready to take the next step, get on a GSA schedule. And uh, he was, um, he, we were just kind of talking about the ESRs requirements, and, and he was telling me about how he had grown and he bought a new building and he, he consolidated his three old locations into this one new location. It was really nice, and he had covered parking, so all of his equipment was out of the sun during the day and it didn't get rained on and it was, it was covered overnight. And, you know, we're just talking in general, and we were talking about the ESRS requirements, and he was talking about how much he hated it. He said, I, I hate hiring subcontractors to work on my jobs because they don't do the work the way my guys do it. I, I have to babysit them. I have to inspect their work when it's done. Sometimes I have to go back and redo their work so it's done my way. He said, I really hate hiring these subs to work directly on these federal contracts. And I said, well, uh, Chuck, you know that new building you just built? He said, yeah. I said, you got a cleaning service uh, cleaning that building? Well, of course I do. And he kind of got upset like I was insulting him. And I said, um, are they federally registered? And he said, well, what the heck, I don't know. I said, did you know if the cleaning service that you hire to clean your building is federally registered, you can write that off on your ESRS requirements? And there was an awkward silence for a minute, and he said, what? And I said, yeah, you can, you can hire federally registered vendors to work for you directly or buy from federally registered vendors and you can write that off on your ESRS without having these guys physically come out and work on your federal contracts. He had no idea. Now everything he buys is from a federally registered vendor so he can write it off without having you know, construction guys physically come out and work on his contract. So his materials supplier, his uh, vehicle leasing company, his equipment repair company, uh, the guys who fuel his trucks, uh, his janitorial company. He even told his accountant, if you don't go register with the feds, I'm going to hire a new accountant. So he's meeting his ESRS requirements without having to have people physically work on those contracts. So having said that, any of these companies can hire you to work for them directly, to provide services for them directly, and they can still write it off on their ESRS. And most of these guys know that. When you come across the rare guy who doesn't and you explain to him that you can and he can write that off, you, you've just made his life so much easier. You've just saved him a ton of time and, and energy. Uh, you're going to be a saint. You're a hero. So he's going to appreciate you for it. He's probably going to find something for you to do, some work for you to do just to prove, you know, just, just to show his, his appreciation. Um, so this list, the way I would do it, this list has been around for a long time. The SBA does not update it as far as outdated information. All they do is constantly add to it. So what I would do is I would take it, copy and paste it into a, a spreadsheet or your database or however you're going to maintain it. And then as you're calling these guys and making notes, you know, Mr. Potter might not be there anymore. Mr. Potter was there 10 years ago when they added themselves to this list. He retired. He passed away. He's been replaced. He's, he's the CEO now, whatever the case. Uh, so this list isn't fully accurate. And some of these companies have merged or, or closed or went out of business, whatever the case. Um, as you make your notes in the file, uh, in six months from now when you decide to go back through this and railroad it again, you can come back in here and cut and paste the new list and merge it in with your old list. And basically all you're going to do when you call these guys, you're going to call them, introduce yourself, hit them with your elevator pitch, Tell them you can help them with their ESRS requirements and ask them that golden question, what can I do to earn your business and your trust? And when you ask that question, don't say a word. I don't care how long the awkward silence is. The first one who speaks loses. You ask that question and you shut up. Let them talk. They're going to tell you 
if there's an opportunity and how you can get in the door with them. They're going to give you some hints on what it takes to, to become a, to have them become one of your clients. And no matter what they say, you know, I've got a project for you, you can start tomorrow, or I'll keep you on my list, I'll keep you in mind, I don't think we'll ever have an opportunity to work together. Whatever they say, you still have a chance to come back and, and say some other things, hit them with some more bullets, uh, answer their rebuttals, etc. But get that elevator pitch out quickly, ask that question, and let them talk. Any questions on subnet? Um, no. Okay. It's pretty cut and dry. I would just take it and railroad it. I mean, even if you can only dedicate an hour a week, in an hour you could knock out 50 or 60 calls. Okay. There's a secondary subsystem where Prime's actually kind of like FBO, but where Prime's post contracts that are open for bid for subs. And that system.